Uh, hello, I'd like to talk about how to lead a happy life according to Buddhist philosophy and practices. When we talk about happy life, people think about what I can buy, what I can own, how much money I have, what kind of excitement I can have, where I should go for it. That kind of thing, you know, people start thinking about when they think about a happy life. One thing that comes to my mind is that excitement is not happiness. Excitement is when you get something new. So here we have to ask a question. Is happiness associated only with something new? Can we not find happiness in anything that is not new or rather that is old? My body is very old, it's 54 years old. My glasses are old, my shoes are old, my books are old, my pants are old, my monasteries, my temples are old. You see? If only something new can give you excitement, then none of what I have would give me excitement anymore. But I'm not looking for excitement. The excitement being associated with something new, so anything new works is magic, but only once or twice. How many times you can watch Harry Potter? How many times? You can't do that many times because you're going to get fed up. So when we talk about happiness and how to lead a happy life in Buddhist philosophy and meditative practices, the first thing we should be aware is uh, very similar to what business people analyze, they call this SWOT analysis. That is to analyze your weakness and threat. So what's the threat to our happiness? The threat is excitement itself. Because excitement can disguise itself as happiness. If we cannot distinguish between happiness and excitement, we are not going to find happiness anytime soon. Anything new, maybe new friends, new couples, uh, you get new anything new, new clothes, new place, new car, new house. And some people, they change their clothes every day into new ones just to excite them themselves, just to ensure that they have enough self-confidence. Because that the, uh, excitement is where they derive their confidence from. So from the Buddhist point of view, that's not the right way to derive confidence. Confidence will come when we have inner peace. The mind should be able to um, to calm down, especially in the face of something inconvenience. So inconvenient now we are talking about the experiences of life, not what we own, not how much we have or how much we have lost, not how many friends we have and how many have abandoned us. How many people like us and how many dislike us. No, we are not looking at life in that way because that's so pre predictable and this, this will constrain our life. What I'm talking about is the experiences of life in two words. There's convenience and inconvenience. How do we react when everything is convenient? In Thai we say, Kwam Sato. When everything is inconvenient, my you know, people just complain, complain. 
maybe traffic light, maybe maybe the, the, the traffic jam, maybe um, the sound from your neighbors, maybe pe people making a lot of noises in the class, maybe people are not talking nice about your product, or um, your performance at work in the office, maybe your family is not offering warm words as they used to do. So these are inconveniences in life and we have to face them. They do exist. They do exist. So the first thing to tell us, to tell us or to remind us of on a daily basis is that there are an inconveniences in life and we will face them. We will face them in the office at work, in the school, even at home with family members. Yes, of course, if you are addicted to so, uh, social media, yes, on the Facebook, on Twitter, um, and the messages that you get through lines, through Fiverr, through um, WeChat, WeChat, so everything, okay? you can break down all of them into just two. Something that is convenient and something that causes discomfort. You know, people, they get up every day. For Christians, they will pray to God that may the day be free from obstacles. The same with um, my friends, in the Islamic faith, in the Jewish faith. Actually, my Buddhist friends would do the same. They get up in the morning sometime. They bound down to the Buddha statue. They do some chanting in maybe in Pali, in Thai, in their languages. And they pray that that day be free from obstacles and problems. I actually take this uh, habit into consideration because I have done this myself. I don't think it prepares me for the worst and helps me to hope for the best. So in English we say prepare for the, for the worst and hope for the best. How do we prepare for the worst? To me, when we get up early in the morning, it doesn't help very much to just pray that today may today be free from problems. Instead, we should remind ourselves, this is a good habit. This is a habit of mindfulness, a habit of meditative uh, mindfulness, to remind ourselves, how do we do? We can remind ourselves that today there may be problems. I don't know which problem. I don't actually know who we cause the problem. I don't know the nature of the problem. I don't know when it will occur. I don't actually know it. But it's possible today there will be some problem. So you are actually preparing psychologically to face the day. So this is about um, preparing for the worst. If you look at the central Buddhist philosophy, we talk about the four truths. In Thai we call Arya Satsi. There's a four kinds of truth. Four kinds of truth. All four of them they center around the existence of problem. Problem we call in Thai Kwam Thuk. In Pali, Thuk Khang. This is problem or inconvenience. The Buddha says, you get up in the morning, you tell yourself there is Thuk Khang, meaning there might be problem at work, at home, on the way when you commute to work, 
with your computer, with your instrument, with anything you work with, that can be a problem. So the first thing, if you tell yourself like this, in the morning, you are quite well prepared for the day. This is just to prepare yourself. You have not started working yet. Then when you actually start working, what if you come face to face with problem? Now, you look at the problem. Of course, you have to see how you react to the problem. We call this reaction pattern or habitual pattern. Because when we face problem, maybe in the school, bully problem, maybe um, study problem, maybe communication problem, anything. Of course, Thailand is very safe compared with American schools. We are very safe. We are very safe. But that doesn't mean that we don't get agitated in the school. That doesn't mean that um, we don't get uh, irritated very often in the classroom. No, we do. Of course, sometimes we enjoy our classes. Um, for business people, they also enjoy their work. But there are times when the boardroom, when the meeting room is very, very tense, very challenging. The going is really, really tough. What do you do then? Remember Charles Darwin's word, fight or flight. Fight or flight. When you face a problem, are you going to fight with this problem? Meaning, you're going to resist this problem. When you resist it, you are actually shutting yourself out from observing and learning anything about the problem. So you are not going to learn anything about the problem. You are not going to understand it. Meaning, with the understanding, you are not going to be solving this problem anytime soon. No. But you are just rejecting this impulsively. You are just using your impulse to reject this problem. So we call this fighting. You are using your maximum energy. Charlton called this uh, defensive mechanism. Defensive mechanism. But defensive mechanism, in order to use your last resort, are you in a, a situation of life and death every time you have a problem in the boardroom? Maybe when there's a traffic jam? Maybe when someone is irritating? Is this life and death situation? Mostly no. If this is not a life and death situation, and it doesn't call for the maximum reaction, maximum energy reaction, but you still use your maximum energy, meaning you are using disproportionate energy to respond to a certain situation. In other words, we can analyze this like, like this. For a problem, you can solve with 100 parts. You are using 1,000 parts. You are wasting too much of your energy, your money, your financial muscle. You feel safe this time. You have solved your problem. But things don't stop here. It's not that easy. Not that simple. Because your subconscious mind, I repeat, your subconscious mind learns this pattern. Your subconscious mind is going to put in a default position that whenever there's a problem, you have to react this way, using your maximum energy. Remember, walking around in your house just to find something or just to take uh, something from this end of the, the room to just the other, other end of the room. If you run all the time, you're not going to survive the whole day. You're going to exhaust yourself very soon. 
that's physical energy. The same is true to mental energy. So to be happy in life, we do need to have a strategy how to deal with something that is inconvenient in life. I'd like to sum up. First, as you get up in the morning, remind you that there might be something inconvenient in, uh, today. So this is the first thing that you should tell yourself. And breathe in and out, slow and gentle. Just try to connect with your, your uh, breathing for maybe a second, one second, virtually one second. Okay. And then as you face problem in daily, uh, in, uh, during the day, in daily life, what you should do is to feel compassionate for yourself, for making any mistake. If other people do the same mistake, then you should recall your, you, you should summon up your compassion and com you should uh, feel compassionate towards them straight away. Because if you are not feeling compassionate towards them straight away, you are going to get angry with them. If you get angry with them, your relationship, your communication with the, that person is not good at all. It's deteriorating. With the deteriorating relationship, how you are going to solve the problem between you and that person? So a good relationship is actually very important. Very important. Compassion. If there is no compassion, there will be anger. A lot of anger. Anger means you can't be happy in life. So this is how to uh, manage inconveniences in life, to, to manage with compassion. Now with compassion, do we just forget about this problem? No, we don't. With compassion now we start observing, we start, we start um, looking at the problem deeply, why this problem has occurred. We have to solve this problem for the sake of both parties. If you are a company, for the sake of your company and also for the sake of your customers. If you are um, a guardian, like a parent, is for your own benefit as well as your family's benefit that you solve this problem. You just cannot, I repeat, you just cannot sweep the problem under the carpet. You do need to look at this problem closely. But the problem is that when people look at a problem closely, they get panic. They get agitated. They lose their temper. They lose their mind. So they can't lead in the in in solving the problem. So this is one area that causes a lot of unhappiness in life. Maybe at home. Maybe at work. Maybe in the school. So if you take care of this particular matter, if you're quite uh, confident in solving with um, inconveniences using both of your IQ and EQ. Okay? Not just thinking how to solve this problem, but also using your EQ, feeling your way through compassion. Then this is one way of leading a happy life. This is the first part, okay? Is how to manage inconveniences in life and then lead a happy life. The second part is um, a lot easier, if you like. Easier in a sense, I'm talking about conveniences in life. Everything is very convenient. You get up, 
in the morning, the loo is just nearby, you take care of yourself and food is available and then you pr prepare yourself, you go to school or you go to work or you start working at home. These conveniences, these conveniences, okay, actually people take them for granted. When everything is convenient, we become quite complacent. Meaning, we don't appreciate as much as we should do. I catch up in the morning. I'm very pleased that I have a glass of water just next to my bed because every morning I drink one or two glasses of water because of the dehydration during the night. And you know, I answer my uh, I answer nature call. I uh, take a shower. I you know I change my my robe in myself. And people do the same at home. They change their clothes. They get ready for the day. Look, everything is going on very smoothly. This is what we call conveniences. Conveniences, don't forget to appreciate them. In Thai, we call this mutita. We call this mutita. This is to rejoice in the good thing, to rejoice in the conveniences of life. Many people complain when the bus is late. Many people complain when there's a lot of traffic jam. But not many people praise the driver, the traffic uh, police, the um, uh, counselors, the administrators, the government, when the bus is running very smoothly. They take it as their right. They don't forget their right, but they forget that life is convenient and it doesn't stay like this forever. There are rainy days and we have to save our energy for those days. How to save them? This is to develop a good habit of appreciating what we have in life. We appreciate our family, our family members for being there. For being a shoulder to cry on when the going is tough. Our friends, our teachers, our neighbors, our fellow countrymen. For a student, remember, just imagine if you are the only one in the school, how scary that would be, how boring this would be. So start appreciating your friends, your teachers, and all the people who have invested to ensure that your school exists and exists to offer, to offer their best to you and to your fellow students. The same is true to business people. There are many things going uh, smoothly for you. Security, the country's security, you see, the army, the um, police force, okay, they're doing their good job. The law enforcement, the judiciary, the um, government and the people, everybody is playing their, their role. We have more, a lot more good people than bad people. So if you, yes, here I like to say, if you have one thing, one inconvenient, one thing inconvenient in life during the day, you can't stop thinking about this. But if you have many conveniences in daily life, 
you don't remember them for so long. Why? Our mind remembers more of the bad thing, more of the negative thing. We call this in psychology, negativity biased. We are biased to negativity. We uh, remember more of the bad things, the bad experiences. So it's important for us to develop this habit. Look at the trees around you. Look at the water, running water coming to your house. This hasn't happened for a very long time, maybe a hundred years. Okay. Thailand had ex existed many hundreds of years. And the world has existed many hundreds of, many thousands of years. But the running water coming right away to your home, even to your room, to your bathroom. This is a new phenomenon. Don't take it for granted. Because whenever the tap water stops working, people actually complain a lot. But when the tap water is running smoothly, I don't see many people saying thank you. When the elect electricity goes off, okay, many people complain. But when we have electricity on and very regularly, working very well, during the day, not just the day, the week, the month. But hardly people say thank you to the electricity boat. You see? So, in order to lead a happy life, remember two things that we have. I mean, how to manage inconveniences, inconvenience as an experience. And also, how to appreciate the conveniences that we do have in our daily life. With these two, okay, it doesn't matter whatever changes come into, come into your life. You will have a lot of resilience, resilience in your heart to manage your day, your life and you will be happy forever. Thank you.